some more. I want to sleep too. Hi everybody, this is Alex and this is Toothless, the big boy band dog. Again, asleep, it's what he normally does this time of day. Or any time of day, really. So, we got a suggestion for a next video and we figured since we're in the video taking mood, we would make sure to get it out of the way. This is a video about the mini educator and why we love it so much. had a friend in me. So we were asked by a service dog handler if we could review this particular e-collar but also how to use it and when to use it. The first thing I wanted to do for those of you who don't know about this educator is that I wanted to talk a little bit about this particular educator, how to use it. This is the mini educator ET300. It's very, very unique because of its particular, very easy to hold remote. Click, click. The way to turn this sucker on is you go to the back and there's a big button and a small button. You get the big button. Press and hold until the blue light turns on. Hey, Kitty, get out of the way. Get out of the way. Come on, move along. Why are your paws wet? Did you pee? Once it's on, you have to make sure that the 1D on top is blinking. That allows you to be able to go up or down on how much stim you want. Right now, Toothless is set at 12. That tends to be his best responsive stim. To make sure that that stays in place, you're just gonna hold this down and everything blinks once and then the 1D on top stops blinking, basically to tell you that if you turn the knob, you're not gonna change the stim level. This is the antenna. Yes, it does come off. When it comes off, you can't <laughs> Once it comes on, it no longer responds to the remote. So make sure that that sucker's in there and nice and screwed in. When looking at it from straight on, we have two buttons on this side, one black one, one red one, both with the letter S on it, and one T on this side that has a black button. The B on this side is gonna be the vibrate function. Whenever you hold down any of these buttons, this strip right here is gonna turn red. If it's green, that just means it has full charge. When you hold down the vibrate button, it's gonna do red like that, and that basically means that you're sending the signal to the remote. You also have the black button right here, which I have set for continuous lower setting. This basically means that it's gonna give me whatever's on the screen. I have this at setting for continuous and continuous. This is gonna be, however, the boost button. This is the button that you press when your dog's about to do something absolutely crazy, something you need to correct him for, or if he's about to walk out into the middle of the street and you need to stop him in his tracks. And the way that I have it set up, these are both continuous, which means as long as I hold it down, it's gonna be giving my dog stim. If I do the lower setting, which is the 12 right now, it's gonna stim for as long as I have that down. And if I hold down the boost, I've already set the boost to go 15 stim higher. If I hold this one down when it's at 12, it's gonna stim at a 27. On the back, the smaller of the black buttons is the one that determines what setting these two buttons are at. You can't change the fact that this is the vibrate button. This is gonna be the remote part that goes on your dog. This strap, of course, self-explanatory, goes around your dog much like a collar. Make sure that it's either on either side of the vocal cord or that it's right behind the ear on that main muscle. To turn it on, you're gonna notice that on the bottom part of this remote, it has kind of a little screen thingy and it has a little red button. To turn on the receiver, all you have to do is line up the two red buttons and the receiver will have a green light indicating that it's on. The easiest way that I like to test that it's on is either telling it to vibrate, or by turning on the lights. To turn on the lights, all you have to do is quickly hit the power button, and the first setting is for blinking. The second setting is for a standard light. I use these all the time when we're out at night just to make sure that Toothless stays safe, and since he's black, to make sure that people see him. They both also have water-savvy charging ports where basically you just remove the port cover to be able to charge them. The charger that comes with it does have the dual plug-in so that you can charge them both at the same time. I think I've used these both continuously for about three or four days without them needing to charge again, so the charge tends to hold up very long. Also, when you're giving stim, the remote will also have a red light that matches with the remote's red light. See that? Also, right before I always put this on toothless, I make sure that I can feel the vibrate and level one stim, making sure that the remote is worked. So, now we're gonna talk about how to use it and when to use it, right? Yes, I think. Okay. So, a lot of people think that the e-collar remote is just for corrections, or just for training, or just for off-leash work. The e-collar is whatever you want it to be. If you're a pet owner and you're gonna be using this for corrections to make sure that your dog doesn't dig holes in the back anymore, you can use it to make sure that your dog doesn't dig holes in the back anymore. If you're a service dog handler and you wanna use this for off-leash healing, you can be a service dog handler that uses it for off-leash healing. The e-collar is completely a tool. Whenever you wanna use it in your training, you can use it that way in your training. Here is how I use the e-collar in my training. So before I even put the e-collar on, 
Before I even put the e-collar on a dog, I make sure that they know whatever command it is that I'm going to be using to enforce the e-collar. Also, I strongly believe in conditioning your dog to the e-collar while they are on a leash to make sure that your dog doesn't feel the stim, get scared, and run away. For Toothless, I conditioned him to the e-collar, and I'm still conditioning him to the e-collar using recall. When Toothless was a lot younger, I would use a 50-foot leash to make sure that Toothless would always come back to me when I would call him. Then one day, I slept on the e-collar and started at a very, very low level. His working level, which I will talk about right now. And I basically, here's how I do it. I use my e-collar to make sure that he comes back if he's distracted or to make sure that he comes back in a timely fashion if I need him to move out of the way for whatever reason. So I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I do it on myself using the vibrate button. So the way that I taught it was, I would give Toothless a tori, which is this come command, and then I would hold. The moment his head turned around to look at me, him saying, what's up mom? I would let it go and start telling him good boy. I know a friend who also does it with but it's up to you whichever way works best for your dog. You can either do the holding down or you can do the click, 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 click. This is basically causing a discomfort to your dog so that the moment that they turn around and they look at you and you stop it, they know, hey, if I go back to my mom, the weird sensation stops. That's how I use it. I also use it for correcting. For correcting, let's say he's walking around and he's really next to me and he just decides to take off. I hold down the red button. If that's not enough, I can also always hold down the knob and up whatever it is and also hold down the stem to make sure that he's stopped in his tracks. This is a complete safety measure. I don't buzz my dog when he's not doing what I want. I only buzz him in, on the hard boost setting when it might be a danger to his safety or when he's out of reach. Keep in mind guys, chasing your dog is not a good idea. So if you have an e-collar, use the e-collar. So the way that I use it is I give a command. If the dog doesn't respond immediately, I hold down. Once the dog does what he was told to do, I let it go and let him know, good boy. Keep in mind, I always teach the command beforehand. I never use the e-collar to teach a command. Also, if your dog is new to the e-collar, you need to condition him to let him know, hey, I'm giving you stim because you're not doing what I'm asking you to. Dog needs to know that the e-collar is a form of communication. It's not always a punishment. It's not always anything in particular. The e-collar needs to be a form of communication with your dog at a distance or when they're off leash. So for example, when I correct Toothless using the e-collar, I always tell him no first. He knows he's getting a harder buzz because he's doing something I don't want him to do. I want Toothless to know that the stim comes from me, that I'm the one that's telling him no and that that's what happens when he doesn't listen. That's how I use it as a correction. For his recalls, I use it to make sure that he stays on track. I make sure that he always comes back. It's what they call an invisible leash. So, you know how if you're dog is not coming to you and you have him on a 50 foot leash at a certain point you would start pulling it's the same thing this needs to be a form of communication with your dog whether you're communicating that you don't want a certain behavior or you're communicating that your dog is not doing what you want you need to use this as a form of communication in my opinion disclaimer this is not on the instruction manual for the thing the things only instruction manual is how to use it how you use it is completely up to you. But if you're watching this video, that means that you must give two cents about what I think about it. So this is what I think about it. This is a form of communication. So here are your steps. Once you obtain an e-collar, put it on your dog, let your dog get used to wearing it. I put the e-collar very high up on my dog and I don't put it on the front because he has so much excess skin. I put it on top right behind his ear. There's a really big muscle. I place it there and I put it relatively tight. If the collar is up high enough, it does not bother your dog's breathing at all and they should feel comfortable wearing it. Also, make sure if you're gonna have it for long periods of time and you're wearing it the way I'm telling you to up high, make sure that you switch it from side to side because you don't want them to get bruising or irritation because of the prongs. The prongs are not the way that it is in a prong collar these are dull and are completely for stim it's not no also don't attach the leash to the e-collar you need to use a flat buckle underneath it if you're using the e-collar and a leash so the first step is that i let my dog kind of walk around wearing it uh while they're on a long leash to make sure that they know hey it's all good next what i do is when i have them on the long leash i give them their command and ask them to come back and when they do it's okay i don't use the e-collar yet i'm just doing it with the e-collar on them and 
a long leash. Finally, we do the jump. So that means that the dog will be on the long leash, they'll be doing whatever they're doing, I call them back. Even if the dog responds, I always use the e-collar at first to condition them to what I want. So the moment I say the command, I hold this down. When the dog turns and starts coming to me, I let it go and I give them the good boy and the yes. Keep doing this for a few days to make sure that your dog is okay and doesn't get very scared with the e-collar. Also, before you do this, make sure that you find their working level at home. To find a dog's working level, you just put the e-collar on them. Once they're kind of used to it, you start at the lowest level at zero. You start working up until you see an ear twitch, maybe your dog reacting that they felt it. That basically means your dog can feel the stim. However, if your dog is distracted, you may need to raise the level because the stim may not be enough to keep them from whatever they're distracted by. So back to the conditioning. Once my dog is responding reliably on the 50 foot leash with the e-collar and they understand kind of what it means, I let them off leash. Once my dog is off leash, I use more of a intermediate kind of a, I call my dog back. If they respond immediately, I don't use the e-collar. If it takes them a little longer, I use the e-collar. That's kind of where you want to get to until this is eventually just a safety thing. Your dog should become completely reliable off leash with this being a safety net kind of a thing. For the most time that I have toothless off leash I've shown this on my lives I don't use the e-collar stim most of the time he comes back reliably off leash and I don't need to use it again your end goal is for this to be a safety net let's say I'm toothless and over here is what I'm smelling and over here is mom yes see how I did that let me do it again yes See how I did that? Basically, I do the hold down or I'll interchange with the hold down and um, the pressing depends on how Toothless is feeling that day. If he's really stubborn, I kind of do the pressing and I work with the stim because since he's a Mastiff, he's very, very bull and hard-headed. Also, keep in mind the power of the vibrate button. For some dogs, like Toothless, vibrate does way more than stim does. So if your dog is distracted, there's nothing wrong with vibrating first and then using the stim. I know a lot of handlers that they eventually turn to the vibrate meaning that that's their recall and they don't need to call the dog back with verbal anything, which is where Toothless and I are working towards. They just hit the vibrate and the dog knows that he needs to start coming back. So guys, I was kind of all over the place with this video. I am so sorry. If you have any questions, please, please, please leave them in the comments. I can make sure to do additional videos to show more things. Hopefully that will help you guys understand how it is that I use the e-collar. Also, everything that I learned about e-collar use I got from a friend and from Solid Canine Training. Solid Canine Training has videos on YouTube. If this video wasn't good enough for you, I didn't mean that in a bad way. I know that my videos are kind of all over the place and crap. So if you want a little more definition or a little bit more of a structured tutorial on how it is to condition your dog to the e-collar and how to use it, you can check out either Solid Canine Training. There's another YouTuber, a uh, dog trainer who um, actually shows how to use the e-collar and I use his methods more than Solid Canine Training. But I know that Solid Canine Training does really good videos too. I will make sure to leave in the comment section both of these person's names. Hopefully I can find links so that you guys can just click the link and go immediately to their channel. Guys, again, I repeat, there is no right or wrong way to use the e-collar. It's just how each trainer uses it. Thank you everybody for tuning in. If you like this video for any reason, feel free to give the like button to let me know that this is the kind of thing you like. Feel free to hit the dislike button if this is not the kind of thing that you like or if you're just completely against e-collars, that's fine with me. If I forget anything and you know how to use e-collars just as well as I do or better, feel free to leave it in the comments. Also, if you didn't particularly like this video and you want to let me know, feel free to leave it in the comments too. I accept positive and negative feedback just as eagerly. I love all feedback. Also, if you have any more suggestions for any of my videos or if you want to tell me anything about my videos or about me, feel free to leave it in the comments or feel free to DM me on my Instagram or YouTube if YouTube has DM. Thank you everybody for watching. Again, if you like this video, feel free to also subscribe. You can do that or you can share or you can subscribe and share or you can like subscribe and share or you can just share. However you want to do it, feel free to do it. Thank you, thank you, thank you again, everybody, for tuning in. I am Alex over here laying down his doofus, the big boy band dog. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in, and may the spoons be with you.